Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. So, I just have been reading a lot more about the history of dogs and stuff like that. And I grew up around dogs, and my grandma was a dog shower. And in the past, I posted pictures of me when I was dog showing when I was young and winning little ribbons and stuff. And I know a lot about how you train dogs discipline them, feed them, exercise them, you name it. And when I screenshot these two several videos, it really got me thinking deeply about the condition of dogs and how they are such useful companions. In Islam, you're allowed to have a hunting dog, a farm dog, and working dogs that provide security and protection, right? And if you look through Arabian artworks, you'll see a lot of greyhound-looking dogs and feral hounds in Egypt. The Basenji is one as well. So it's not just cats. You know, cats get mice, but so does a terrier breed. Uh, Yorkies and whatnot. They also do that job. So pest control is done by terrier breeds and by cats, not just cats. And dogs from Alaska, from pulling sleds, and Dalmatian dogs going with the firefighter, bloodhounds hunting down criminals, not to mention countless military dogs throughout history, all the way from the Romans using dogs in war, to modern militaries using German shepherds, to police officers using German shepherds, the Burmese mountain dogs, and then St. Bernard dogs rescuing people from water, people who are buried in an avalanche. Uh, when technology goes down, the dog is there. And Labradors, when you shoot down a duck, a goose, pheasant, they retrieve it in the water for you so you don't have to swim in that. Overall, dogs are wonderful animals, and not every dog is a chihuahua in a purse of Paris Hilton. Okay, but and also dogs suffer, dogs suffer, and one of the saddest videos I ever saw, which is is pretty graphic. Okay, so if you have kids, you probably don't want to have them hear this. It was in Turkey. A person was walking, I don't know, with like their family, and they turned the phone over, and there was a man. Uh, viciously r-wording a dog and the way the dog ran away uh, you could see this animal had truly suffered and it was at the point where we it wasn't it, it was the way the video pans over is like clearly that it's at the point where the dog runs away and the man is pulling up his pants and it's it's quite horrific quite horrific uh, how some men harm dogs in that way it's just so nightmarish and in the two screenshots I showed there was a person who dumped their dog in the worst place you could do it's always bad to dump a dog but on a busy road and the dog chases the car and it's really heartbreaking he doesn't understand what's happening is like you're abandoning me and just this the the way that the dog's loyalty is betrayed it's painful when you see it right because dogs when they had this capacity to either maul you or be loyal to you and think about how for example the blind man blind person is led by a dog it's really quite fantastic and special needs kids who are depressed or they do self-harm they have seizures and they have a care dog with them or elderly people you bring in a puppy and it just makes you feel a lot better and yes Islam has hadith where there was one where there was a puppy under Aisha's bed and an angel wouldn't come in and they have this feeling that a black dog is a Satan but I don't think it's wise to then want to just kill all dogs because dogs do a wonderful task and I trust a dog more than I trust a robot 
Okay, do, uh, even though pit bulls will maul a two-year-old, I still don't trust a DARPA robot to uh, protect me as much as dog. But I digress. And so when I saw that, I was like, this is so sad. But then I saw something amazing and quite adorable where an Antolian shepherd pup is learning how to herd sheep. And he's a little teeny tiny, you know, it, it, He's gentle with the sheep, and the sheep are cuddling with them, but he's learning. And Border Collies have this as well, where they're just fantastic herding dogs. And I highly doubt that... Like, people always love to minimize and hate on dogs and because of there's cultures that despise dogs. They're desert people. They don't really, f like, have the same... They're not herding massive Angus cattle or sheep in Denmark or trying to get a cow in the snow to come back so there's a bit of a cultural disconnect but dogs know how to be when they're properly trained excellent and gentle towards the animals that they're herding and poor people they're not gonna buy some fancy military robot dog to scare the living crap out of their livestock to herd sheep and there's not always enough people around to help. And dogs are very cheap to breed and to train. They, you, and even when you need to get some bulls back in the pen, a dog can be very agile more than an adult human. You're not just going to carry a gun and shoot a bull because he, you got him by the horns and he doesn't want to go in the pen. Now you have this giant carcass and what have you done? All that money wasted, right? So, it's very common for people who've never been around livestock and they've never worked with animals to minimize the contributions dogs have given to humanity. And I'm not one of those people who minimize dogs. I do understand people fetishize dogs in a way, dressing them in clothes. Chelsea Handler went skiing uh, nearly naked with her dog in a baby carrier on her back. Uh, so, I am very well aware of people who take things way too far with animals. But I think it's important to just see the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us by allowing us to have hunting dogs and dogs that serve and it establishes the relationship between humans and animals. And when you're lost and you, you want to find your kid... And you give your the stuffy and they get the scent. And that dog, some dogs can track a scent for that are two days old. You know, a robot ain't going to do that. And if you want to put a microchip in your kid so that a robot can find them, that's up to you, right? That I only suggest that for criminals. But if you want the government being able to identify your position at all times with a microchip, okay. If you're not a felon, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Black Mirror... I uh, had uh, episodes where microchip was used for a guy and his wife and where a young girl was tracked and it, it's very dystopian. So it's a little different. So in the way you square it, a robot is not going to replace uh, a dog very well at this point. And a dog's are just really fascinating creatures and I want to do some more videos on each specific breed. I'm still reading a lot about each specific breed but their history, their function and I do admire just people like there's people who say you know breeding and selling dogs is haram but if you are breeding like if you have let's say a hundred goats you need to go out in the snow to go get them. You need to have a dog trained for that. The person is doing you a favor by training a dog and then selling it to you. Why should they give it to you for free when they trained and put all that work in? You pay them money for the dog, the dog performs a function. I would love, my, my dream is to have a very well uh, security dog. And... The people, like, the, the, I've shared in the past, craft work canine. I shared their videos. Like, these dogs, you fire a gun, they stay focused. You have a stick or a belt, they don't care. They're coming at you. They are machines, and I think they are brilliant. 
and as a woman you have one of those dogs next to you you know a man doesn't stand a chance if he has a weapon okay but if you have a weapon and a dog I mean that dog is gonna maul that predatorial man or woman for you and I think that's beautiful but someone has to train that dog and they should be compensated for their hard work and I just find it very odd I'm not sure how true that fatwa is but I don't understand why someone would be punished for helping a dog to do a herding job well you know and when you have husky dogs they pull sleds in some rough terrain if you ever watch shows like the YouTube channels like the Outdoor Boys he has a snow I forgot what they call that it's like a snowmobile but it's always breaking down right that engine is it's quite difficult and they're expensive quite expensive and gasoline isn't always available yet if you look at these nomads who are mushers using dogs yeah a dog can break its foot we have a couple more but just the fact that you can they, you can use these dogs to travel I find that to be remarkable and even when we had carriages there'd be Dalmatian dogs and different breeds that knew how to operate around horses and clear the path and keep the horses in line for you while you're in your carriage and while the driver is like dealing with the horses you know because they're temperamental creatures and so I just see so much utility in dogs and so it's a fascinating relationship we humans have with an animal that is domesticated by us and is exists to serve us and how it can go so wrong when the dog loves us in a way it's like I think about where would they go when they die you know where are all these animal souls going because there's something there and dogs are a very unique animal and they have helped humans survive by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when a dog isn't properly trained they become a menace but when they are properly trained they're a lifesaver and I just find that people who don't respect animals and don't respect dogs are pretty wicked and when you look at really wimpy dogs like a labradoodle I shared not too long ago these two men they look Sri Lankan or from India uh, and they were beating that dog and they were supposed to be groomers like groomers who make their hair pretty this person has no idea that their very docile sweet dog is being beaten for fun by people who don't respect animals or respect dogs and so you see how much dogs suffer more at the hands of humans when humans turn their heart callous towards an animal and Islam doesn't tell us to abuse animals and I think it's important that people have a healthy relationship with the appreciation of the animal kingdom and that dogs play a key role and whenever you look at these zombies movies the apocalypse movies your electrical grid is down you're back to being a nomad you're back to being in the raw reality and then you will see how useful dogs are as alarm beckoners guard dogs of your property herding livestock they're very useful very useful and so it's important to teach your kids to have respect for animals and just because a dog's nose violates your redo doesn't mean you need to have a disgust for dogs because if you were being r-worded and a dog came and defended you you would owe your life to that dog in a way you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that dog saved you if your little girl was missing hiking she was taken by kidnappers and a bloodhound is out there walking in places where you can't walk you would thank that dog you went skiing with your children an avalanche came and that dog can find you the levels under the snow you went fishing you fell out of your boat you're struggling 
You don't have a very good life jacket. There's some storm that happened. They have a helicopter come down. They let the dog go in. Dog goes in, swims faster than a human, and has more endurance. You hold on to that dog, it pulls you to the ladder to go up in the helicopter. There's endless examples. Okay? And if you don't look at puppies and just melt, I think that you're a very twisted, evil individual. There was a video where Vladimir Putin was gifted a dog, and it was a very nice dog, and the guy held it up and gave it to Putin, and it's such a masculine gift to give a dog. And you can tell a lot about somebody by how they treat their dogs, what they feed their dogs, and what kind of dog they own. And that's always been something, you know? There's a lot of different ways to look at it. In All Quiets on the Western Front, there was a scene where one of the generals, of the Germans, he tossed some meat to his, like, mastiff-looking dog who has giant testicles. And you're like, that's a dog. Like, that's a real dog. And then you see, like, the progressive feminist who's neutered her dog, and her dog has really skinny legs and looks like she's making him vegan. You can see a lot about a person's mindset with how they treat their dog. And people trying to make dogs vegan, not feeding them right, having puppy mills. You can definitely see by the like what I've been trying to say, someone's morality. And so when an American who reverts to Islam tries to take on Arab culture or Pakistani or Indian culture, you name it, where like, oh dogs are disgusting, it's like stop you're doing an actual disrespect to your own culture. You're being fake. And you don't need to be disgusted by that animal. Because they actually do a lot of good. And maybe I should share more evidences of that. They are dangerous, but people will be in awe when you own a tiger. Or when a wealthy Arab owns a cheetah. Or a stupid lion. And those creatures are meant to eat you. Like, they will love to eat you and maul you. They will turn on you faster than a, a reptile, okay? You're just keeping them sedated with drugs, so they haven't mauled you yet. But a tiger is not as useful as a dog, right? And so if you're impressed with someone having a tiger in their kitchen or on their property or chained up in a cage... But you're disgusted that someone has a security dog. I'd say that your priorities are pretty bizarre. Right? Be impressed with someone who has a machine loyal dog. Rather than a tiger who literally just can't stop thinking about what that person's brain tastes like. It's strange. Very strange. And I also shared in the past. There was these... Uh, people who had little terriers and they would go and kill rats on the farm because in places where there's not enough reptiles or owls they suffer with uh, getting rid of rat problems because rats they eat the grain they spread disease right so if they're not curated enough there's going to be a problem using poison actually hurts the groundwater hurts the soil because the body decomposes with all those toxins and you're making it so that when that animal dies, if an owl comes across it, a falcon, a hawk, an eagle, a vulture, they'll be poisoned too because the food is poisoned. So you're actually harming the environment by using poison. Now, these terriers, they're so tenacious. They're little tiny things, right? So a lot of ignoramuses who hate dogs think just because a dog is small, it can't have utility. So this highlights the faulty education these individuals have and how they're actually just brainwashed by Hollywood and they should actually research and learn more about the dogs and the breeds and what they're historically used for and encourage people to use the animal according to what it was designed for, not just as a pet, right? And so these little terriers, they would go in and like just, they just wouldn't let go of the rats and they went quick. And... They would lift up this, like, piece of wood or a pallet. they go into the chicken coop, you name it. 
and broop, there goes those terriers fast, right? Because rats scatter. Mice scatter. They're fast. They are uh, tricky little buggers. And letting the dogs uh, shake them out and finish them off, because they grab them by the throat, and so they, they, they take them out more humanely than what a poison would, right? And setting little traps, you're, it's not really going to do much. So you see the brilliant function of those uh, critters, those little dogs, and brave dogs that have been trained will take out snakes as well. And there are some I've seen, even in the swamps, they'll catch you a frog, catch you a catfish. They're really quite brilliant animals. And so it's very important to just appreciate all the wildlife that Allah has given us, but to know you're doing a sin by mistreating a dog. And if you can't take care of an animal, don't get it in the first place. And a dog should be taken to a shelter and you should not dump it in the street. And be kind to uh, stray dogs. In Turkey, pretty interestingly, I saw videos where their stray dogs are allowed. Like they put food out and they're so used to people and they... I saw a bunch in the video they were just sleeping in front of a shop and people walk in and out like nothing and the dog they lay there and it's like that's actually quite nice but if you did that in Oakland you should be very careful because those pit bulls Staffordshire Terriers bully breeds they're, they're trained by gangsters and they are usually cage fighting dogs and they've been neglected by thug culture and beaten and traumatized so those dogs probably just maul you because they're very skittish. They were broken. They weren't trained, right? I really do encourage people to take time out and learn about animals because it's just a, there's just so many fascinating things about them. And so if you come across those two tweets, uh, Think about it and just do some self-reflection. Have a conversation with your kids. Because remember, serial killers, they harm animals first. There was recently a, a cross-dressing male. The media reported it as she, but it was actually a male. And they committed a crime. But one of the videos they had uploaded to the internet was them putting a cat in a blender. And time and time again you'll see that the wicked people, they torture animals first, and cats and dogs are often victims of some of the worst crimes. And I hope they get a sense of justice because they obviously have consciousness and feelings and feel pain and suffering. And so I do often think about what is their place in the universe and where do they go when they die? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't tell us that I know of, but it would be nice to think that they go to a place where there there is no more suffering. Let me know what you think, and if you'd like to join my blog and support the channels, it's www.subscribestore.com slash Hope to see you there.